Hi there, welcome to the Raven's Call. I'm Eric Wordweaver Shervin, Goldie of the Ridgar Folk here in East Texas, and I'd like to welcome you to the show. This is a show where I ramble on about different heathen related subjects, just kind of whatever strikes my fancy at the time, sets my mind on fire. So before we get started, big UPG warning. Um, I am not what you would call a hardcore recon or a historical heathen. I am a middle of the road guy. I'm not Fluffy Bunny, I'm not hardcore recon, I'm somewhere in the middle, okay? Uh, I take building blocks from history, but I create my own thing. Um, I find my place, my heathenry in today. And, uh, you know, true to the gods, ancestors, my folk, uh, my near the Vates here, uh, as far as my Husviti and my, my hearth god, and uh, the like. So these are core elements that I consider to be core heathenry. Uh, and then, of course, I build some of the trappings from historical heathenry. I build some from my own insights and logic, etc., etc., etc. Do a ton of reading. Uh, just like most of you. And so this is very much just kind of how I see the world. So you may find value in that, you may not. But uh, that's that's the warning there. Don't come in expecting Hardcore Recon with my channel. Uh, you're not going to get it. Don't come in expecting Super Fluffy Bunny either because I'll look at you and go, uh, uh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Middle of the road. That's me. Middle of the road. All right. So without further ado, we're, before we jump into that, okay, so there's a little more to do. <laughs> we're going to talk about housekeeping stuff. Down below, you will find the subscribe button. You will find the bell. Ding both of those, please. Uh, the more subscribers I get, the more people interact with my videos, the more it gets out to other people. That tells the YouTube algorithms, hey, this is something that people are interested in. This may be something that other people might be interested in. And so it spreads it around to other eyes. Down in the bottom below, you're going to see uh, in the description feed, um, all kinds of contact information, everything from email to Facebook to mailing address, all kinds of stuff. Um, check it out. You can hit me up there however you'd like. Um, <clears throat> I also have a review show on the channel, uh, Raving Raven Reviews. So I don't know if you guys have checked that out any. Um, only about 50 or so views a piece on those videos to start out with. So I know a lot of you haven't watched those, but I go through and talk about media and stuff from a heathen point of view. Eh, it's fun. So it's just a little side project. But um, hit me up in the contact information below. I'm not real great at getting back to emails, guys. I do keep those up as unread in my box. I check them, I say, okay, this is something I can come back to. I mark it as unread so that it still leaves a big flashing, hey, here's a number for you. Uh, you have this many you need to get back to. And things have been crazy lately. It's been uh, it's been nuts. I'm doing good to have time to film these. I'm having to sneak it in where I can. And so I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you guys. I'll leave them there on purpose. Uh, some of them are months old, and I apologize for that, guys. I'm not ignoring you. I just haven't had a chance to sit down and go, okay, now I'm going to go through emails. Um, it's a thing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a ridiculous thing, but it's a thing. Also, if you hit me up on Facebook Messenger, the app buries those conversations. Uh, the new new conversation requests, I have to actually go dig for those and occasionally I'll get a flash up, hey, so-and-so has sent you a message. And so I'll go through and I'll pull it up and I'll take a look and I'll have three or four in there that some of them go back months that I was completely unaware of. And I had one guy who'd messaged me several times over the span of a couple of months and I was, I had no idea it was in there. So I went through and I replied to him and then we kind of went back and forth and he's replied to me again and I still owe him a reply. I think it was like last week or something that he last replied to me. I just kind of sat down and, you know, handled that. So I think you know who you are. I am not ignoring you. I will get back to you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a thing. So Hit me up through those channels. Just understand if I don't get back to you right away. Uh, it's nothing personal. It's just busy. It's, it's like everybody else in the world right now. We're all busy. I'm busy too. So uh, I will sit down and I start trying to pick a day where I go through and handle fan mail and get all that stuff back to you guys. So anyway, um, on to today's subject. Okay. Now, if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know that one of my big things is grassroots heathenry. I am a grassroots heathenry kind of guy. I like to see it grow up from the ground up. Now, originally, I started the whole grassroots heathenry thing as a counter to like national orgs and big organizations, stuff like that, where I feel like the essence of kindred-based, tribal-based uh, heathenry gets lost. Uh, and subsumed into this big megalithic um, conglomerate of heathenry. It's, it's very corporate, and uh, I don't like it. I know it has its purpose. I know the networking that takes place, some of the support structure, some of the resources and everything. I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it. 
I still don't like it. <laughs> it's not. It's not for me. Um, I, for one, will not get involved in any organizations. Uh, I just don't. I'm my, I have an organization. It's Ridgar. We do what we do, and uh, that's that's my world, my life. So, um, grassroots heathenry. I have continued to build on this particular ideology over time, and it means more to me each and every passing day. And uh, the one of the things that I, I was sitting talking with a good friend of mine that I think I would like to start, you know, focusing on the channel. Uh, he and I got to talking about more of the elements of hearth culture, tribal culture, and the differences that occur between tribes. This sense of tribal identity, of kindred identity, um, of hearth identity, and building that sense of who you are. Uh, and building your own world, your own world view, as opposed to that which has been ascribed to you. And this is something I want to do a little bit more with the channel in the near future. I'm going to do, I'm not going to call it a series, but it's a light, light series, uh, where I will be pulling up and talking about more hearth culture things, more tribal culture things. And I'm not going to get away from the woo-woo stuff. I'm still going to go back into some of the woo-woo stuff. I'm still going to do like my artisans video that I've got coming up, which, by the way, shout out to all you heathen artisans out there. I have a post up on the Facebook group. If you email me, uh, if you are a heathen artisan and you want to be involved in episode 100, which is going to be about heathen artisans and whatnot, I am opening up to select individuals. Everybody can email me. I will choose from those, uh, the ones that best fit what we're doing. Uh, I want to keep it under two minutes if we can. A uh, little spots about um, who you are, what your artisanry is, um, blacksmithing, art, music, uh, poetry, whatever it is, uh, what your art form is, and what it means to your heathenry. And then I'm going to put together kind of a montage of some of these for episode 100. At least that's my hope. Uh, we shall see how this goes. I'm relying on some key individuals to go in there um, with some specific spots. Those are a little bit longer, but those are invites that I wanted to do specifically. And then I'm opening up the invite for others. I've already gotten some submissions in. If you guys want to get those in, I need those in. Um, within This will go live uh, tail end of August, so within the next week. So uh, if you can get them in to me uh, before... Uh, the first Wednesday in September. I should be able to work with those uh, because if I push too long, I'm not going to have time to edit and format. I need those in .mov or .mp4 when you send them to me. You can send me Dropbox links. You can send me um, mega links, whatever, whatever works for you. Uh, you can email it to me directly, but I will warn you that does impact uh, email box size. And so we may end up with some issues there relating to whether or not I can get them, okay? So anyway, back to the key point. I'm going to continue doing these kind of videos, but I do want to push more on some of this hearth culture, tribal culture, this identity kind of element, because it's something that I see as extremely important. In today's modern heathenry, we fall victim to something that I see as being an issue uh, from... I can't tell if it's just kind of a Western society thing or if it's because of the influences of monotheistic and other kind of larger polytheistic religions. Um, but there seems to be this globalization that occurs. And not only that, a need for globalization. Yeah, there is a certain amount of globalization that occurs when you're talking with people about like heathenry in general, about paganry in general. And... The problem is, if you go back and look at Archie in times, you go back to, you know, pre-conversion, all of this, that which we call heathenry isn't one singular thing. Never was. And um, it can't be today, not in really work. Heathenry itself was kind of this conglomeration of disparate tribal beliefs. Now, there are some commonalities that go across. Uh, if you look at some of the archaeological stuff, if you look at some of the literature, you will see there are some key things that are present uh, kind of across the board, kind of some key elements to bloat, some key elements to ritual structure. Um, you can look online and find some good research on heathen holidays, uh, not the stuff that the AFA put out back in the day, but some actual like historical heathen holiday stuff. Um, I know the article by Robert Sass gets passed around a lot. 
Uh, but there's some good research out there. He does good research. That's the reason I pulled it out there. Um, you can find those online as far as you know, good information about uh, even holidays, um, Sumble as far as Sumble from a historical side, uh, as opposed to necessarily Sumble how we do it here in our area. I can't necessarily speak for everybody else without doing that whole globalization thing. Um, I don't do a historical symbol. I do more of a modern symbol with the three rounds, you know, gods and goddesses, ancestors, and then toasts, oaths, and boasts. Um, it's what works for my tribe. always has, and that's what we do. It's our tradition. And so we go that way. I recognize certain elements, but I also recognize the why that we do what we do. And uh, I know what we're doing, and we know why we're doing it. We know what it's for. We know the function that it serves, both metaphysically and sociologically. And so that's why we do it. And it works for us, and that, that's that's what I want to get to here, is that I would like to see more tribes build their own tribal identity. You know, like I was saying, these ancient tribes all had different views. They all had different uh, different ways of looking at things. Some some regions didn't even worship the same gods and goddesses. When you get into some of the larger, broad sweeping stuff, uh, you get like the absence of Nerthus from the Scandinavian Icelandic lore. You get the absence of Loki from the more Anglo-Saxon mainland lore, um, which comes to the discussions of were these late editions? Are they literary functions? Obviously not Nerthus, because Nerthus we have tons of research on and processions and things like that. Um, but the key thing is that there were some differences that occurred. Now, yes, there are broad sweeping similarities that are centered around what we would call generally heathenry, which is Germanic, Northern European uh, paganism, uh, centering around the Aesir and, and that. So the regional differences were because people didn't care as much in the day about necessarily some globalizing effort because back in the day there weren't even like centralized kingdoms if you look at uh, Heimskringla is all about um, the in the beginning parts anyway of Harold Fairhair coming in and unifying Norway and then all of the subsequent kings unifying Norway and fighting for Norway and all of that um, before that in staunchly heathen times it was regional kings, regional groups, tribes. Um, kin they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have called themselves kindreds, but um, <coughs> families, tribes, smaller kingdoms, things like that. Um, you know, even in Iceland, there's the Godor element where they break it up into parts, and they're each disparate, and then they kind of come together as a communal whole and discuss things. Um, there's differences by region. There's differences by family. I find that no two heathens actually believe the exact same thing. They may have similar influences, they may pull from similar sources, but they're not necessarily <coughs> the same thing, you know? Um, some people will take the lore as more metaphorical, some will take the lore as more literal. Uh, it varies. It, it varies, varies, varies uh, between all these different people. And what I want to see, what I want to encourage, is coming back to that. I don't want people to step up to heathery and go, well, you know, this is in the Eddas, this is, you know, Snorri wrote this, or this is in the Poetic Edda, and it's got to be this way. Guys, that wasn't written down by heathens. <laughs> Some of it, we believe, like, especially with, like, the Poetic Edda comes from sources that may have come from heathen times, but it wasn't written down by heathens. It was written down by somebody else and then survived and was put together in, like, Codex Regius and things like that. Snorri himself was a Christian monk who wrote all of this stuff down. And so you can read the Prose Edda and see that a lot of this is just him trying to keep the stories alive so that Nordic skaldic poetry uh, would have reference material. And so in order to do that, he changed a lot of things to make it fly with the church because he can't sit here and necessarily write Norse mythology out uh, without offending the church and putting himself in the wrongs. And uh, if you look at Snorri's history, Snorri was actually something of a coward anyway. Um, I have a lot of respect for Snorri as far as what I have done research on his personal life. Um, but I have respect for the fact that he actually wrote stuff down because it is part of the only way that we have uh, stories of the gods and whatnot surviving. But it goes deeper than that. You know, yes, if you look at the Prose Edda and the Poetic Edda and <clears throat> the Icelandic sagas and things like this, you get a 
a core line of stories that we can pull from, um, but they're late writings, some of them later than others, and they're of, in a lot of times, questionable veracity. Um, there's syncretism that occurs, there's influences from Christianity, from just the writer. Uh, there's all sorts of things that may contaminate or damage these. Now, ultimately speaking, they're all we have, um, but the Eddas are not primary sources. They're secondary sources. They were written down by someone else pulling stories from what would have been a primary source. And it's even possible some of these are tertiary sources um, that were written from secondary sources that were written from primary sources. So we can't necessarily take for face value what's in the Eddas and sagas, etc., etc., etc. Now, the Icelandic sagas are pretty straightforward as far as you know what they were, but again, <clears throat> they're mostly late era. And so I, I caution people about taking them too literally, too seriously, and not applying some serious synthesis and thought. So that's what I want to encourage with this channel. I want to encourage people to get out there and think for themselves, to develop for themselves, and to explore things. Different tribes are going to believe different things. Different tribes are going to build different ways of doing things and go about things in a different fashion. And I want to see you guys build a tribal identity. Um, and now, of course, I use the term tribe. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to use the term tribe. You can use the term kindred. You can use whatever you want to. Hearth, uh, name it. It doesn't matter because it's your hall and it's your call. And that's, you hear me come back to the whole not my hall, not my call thing all the time because I respect the sovereignty of someone else's hall. I respect that they are going to do things differently than how I do things. Not only am I going to respect that, I'm going to encourage that. I want people to go out and start to think about the mythology different. I want people to think about the the practices and what they mean to them, the whys. You're going to hear me come back to why again and again and again. Why do you do this? What is its purpose? Why? Why do we do this ritual? Why do we do it like that? The whys matter. And if you have the whys in place, the how then becomes yours to create. Because you want to keep the same function. You know, do you want to go through and pull from historical sources? Okay. Why do you want to do that? I'm not going to say your answer is wrong. If you want to and you have a good reason why, then Cool. All right. You have a building block to now develop your own cultural identity. Do you want to be more creative in things? Well, then why? And what does that mean for your cultural identity? Now, there are going to be things that if you deviate too far from, then yeah, of course, it's going to be hard to still identify it as heathenry. Uh, there's some core things that really need to be there. But as far as I am concerned, as long as you're true to the gods and goddesses, Honor the ancestors, honor the Vaitir, mostly your Husvetir, your hearth god, and your Enengar, your folk, uh, and your surrounding folk community, uh, not some globalized folk, your folk, your people, those that are around you. As uh, long as you're good to all of that, I, I can't contest whether or not you're heathen, all right? It's not my place to. Um, I'm going to judge you by your deeds and actions. Now, if I come in and you do a ritual that just doesn't have, I can't figure out the why for, and it doesn't have any kind of basis in history, but I, and then I can't figure out why this would work otherwise, I'm probably not going to engage in it because I don't, that may be your hall and your call, but that doesn't mean I'm going to engage in it. I'm going to respect that that's how you guys do things, but I may abstain because, mm, I don't know, <laughs> you know, uh, it's going to be varied. And that's the thing that we've got to get to is we've got to get to a point where not only do we have our individual cultural identities, but we respect those. And we respect those not just by, you know, saying, okay, I acknowledge that you exist, but we respect those by going, this is how you do things. And I'm going to let you do it that way. I may not participate. But I'm not going to dishonor you by making some kind of a scene. I'm not going to disrespect you by challenging all of this. I'm not going to come in to a tribe and see that they do bloat in some ridiculous fashion that makes no sense to me and then try and disrupt everything because I feel like 
this is wrong. I'm going to come in and go, you know what, guys? I can't really take part in that, and here's why. I'm going to respectfully explain to them, I can't really be a part of this um, for my own reasons, for my own cultural, cultural identity reasons. I can't be a part of this. And so I'm going to step back, <laughs> and I'm going to let you guys do it. So I want to see more of that respect. I want to see that grow up between people so that the breadth and wonder of individual tribal identities can grow and flourish in this world so that we can see what they saw back in the day. You know, that's how they did things over in Bjornstedt. That's how they did things over in, you know, in Norway or in Iceland or in Greenland or in Finland. But even more than that, narrow that down. You know, this is how they did things in the northern fjords. This is different than how they do things down in the southern fjords. If you look at just America, because I'm American, obviously, if you look at America, uh, the U.S., you can see that there is a difference between how they do things in the north, how they do things in the south, how they do things in the east coast and west coast. It doesn't matter <laughs> what you say. It's different. They do things differently. Now, technology has washed away a lot of the differences, but there are still some regional differences that are key identity issues. I'm from Texas. You know, we're down here in the South and we have our own identity separate from the rest of the South. And that's just from being Texan, let alone actually being a heathen in Texas. So naturally, my heathenry is going to take on an element of Texas heathen. There are going to be things that we do that are unique to us, that are regional to our, our area and how we do things and why we do things. I look at... Um, like, for instance, in uh, midsummer, one of the key elements in our rituals is we use watermelon. Why? Because watermelon's everywhere in Texas this time of year. It's very much a part of our homeland. It's very much a part of the world around us that is our lives, our childhoods. This is us. Pieces of us that we use to honor the gods and goddesses. Because while we may pull from traditions from thousands of years ago, we are not those people. While we may be built on the ideals and the actions and the deeds and all of this that's passed down in our orlog from our ancestors, we are not our ancestors. Our ancestors live on through us, but it is up to us to make our here and now something beautiful. And that's what we need to do. If we keep chasing this picturesque ideal of how things were without stopping to actually live life, then... What's the point in living it? Similarly, if you just wander without any kind of target, without any kind of direction, then you end up in the sticks and have completely lost your way. So that's why I, I advocate balance. I advocate a little bit of this and a little bit of that, this, this center approach. Um, very much the tree, you know, rooted in tradition, but free growth towards the future. I like to incorporate my culture because I am heathen. I am not heathen because my ancestors were heathen. I am heathen because I am heathen, because I believe in the gods, because I value my ancestors and my people. I have a respect for the land around me and the spirit of my home. I have these core values, and therefore I'm heathen, not because my ancestors were. So I'm not trying to go back and do what they did. I'm doing what I do and hoping that it makes them proud. Now, I will pull from things that they may have done in the past and incorporate that. But even then, <laughs> pulling from some big whitewashed conglomerate of heathenry in general, some monochromatic heathenry, you know, this, this thing, this big well, everybody, this is heathenry. You know, this is, this is how we do bloat, this is how we do sumble, this is what we believe, and blah, 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 blah. Pulling from that does not honor my ancestors. Pulling from what my ancestors did, pulling from what they believed, from how they practiced things, yeah, that's, that's heathenry, because that's your ancestors feeding into you. So if, uh, you know, yeah, all of this comes back from, like, Northern Europe, but if you've got generations in the area that you're in, it makes sense to pull traditions from in your area and incorporate that into your heathenry, because it's part of you. It's part of your life. Um, all of your ancestors are part of your Orlog, whether they were heathen or not. Uh, whether you appreciate them or not, 
they are part of your Orlog. You inherit from them. Whether it's a debt or a boon, it doesn't matter. You inherited from them. And there is an element of that. If any of your ancestors didn't undertake the actions they took when they took them, you might not be here today. So even if you inherited bad luck, you still wouldn't be here if they hadn't done what they did. So you at least owe them that. I pull from the ancestors some. Um, I definitely want to honor them in what we do. Now, if I'm going to honor my ancestors, I'm not going to do it through some generic Northern European approach. I like to have those elements because a lot of my ancestry does come from Northern Europe, specifically from Norway. Um, I like to have Norwegian elements in it uh, because that does speak to my ancestry. When I put out my offering in the morning, um, I share my coffee with the ancestors and with my hearth god. Uh, but when I put my offering out for my ancestors in the morning, I use one of my grandfather's mugs. And it's a silly little mug with two trolls on the front of it that are sitting there and they're drinking coffee together uh, on stumps over a fire. And it says, Skull with a Troll. I love it. It's endearing and it means a lot to me because it was from my grandfather. And when he passed, this is one of the things that I inherited. So I build on that family identity. I build on tribal identity because Ridgar as a whole has our own identity that is separate from everybody else in the Texas area that's separate from the Midwest and the rest of America. Ridgar is Ridgar. We do things the way we do things. You know, do we celebrate some holidays that others might not? Yeah, absolutely. Do we celebrate some that are probably not um, historically accurate? Oh yeah, totally, totally. But it doesn't matter because the why matters. To me, we have our understanding of the way that the world works based on the research, based on observation, based on all of this. We have put it together and we have a view. Why do I advocate this? Because you matter. <laughs> Pause for a second and contemplate this for a second. You matter. Your insights matter. Your values matter. Your ancestors value you the way that you value them. They look after you, they grant you luck, they, they have a vested interest in you continuing. And so they are proud when you step up and be you. I mean, look at you know, the booming, proud grandfather who looks at his kid and is like, well, his grandkid, he's like, it's not like I am, he's not me, but he's awesome at what he does. Or, you know, she is just wonderful at what she does. She excels in her field, she's brilliant. Um, I'm so proud of her. You know, no, it's not what we did the way we did it back in the day, but she's beautiful in this moment. She's intelligent. She's wonderful. You know, that's the way that they, they look after us. They're here for us, and they want you <laughs> to be you. They want you to encourage. At least I believe they do. This is my belief. Again, UPG warning on everything, but your opinion matters. Your values matter. Your view matters in your world. <laughs> In your Inengard, in your worldview, it is your worldview. You're entitled to it. Believe what you will believe, do what you will do. Um, a lot of people will counter all of this because it's like, you're doing it wrong, etc., etc. I don't care. All right? We'll probably get thumbs downs on this one, but we'll see where this goes in the future. But the reason I say that you matter is because your insights have value. You get to look back at all of the research that's done. You get to look back at the way things were performed and add yourself to it. Become a part of this. You are part of the tapestry that is your family story. You are part of the well. You get to put a piece of yourself in it. And in this world where we have lost, in this, in this search for individualization, in the search for this rugged individuality, we have lost the individuality. You are not you anymore. Back in the day when it was very family-centric, when everything was centered around the family, and uh, you know, if you were you know, Bjorn, son of you know, whatever, and you were a member of like, okay, we'll pull from my book, the Thorlsons. So let's say you're Nils, son of Bjorn, and Nils gets to go out and be Nils under the umbrella of his family. He has the safety and the support of his family, so he gets to build his own identity within that family. He's got boundaries. He's got a structure that he can belong to, that he can exist in. Today, we have lost so much of that because so much of the family unit has fallen apart. So much of the, and I'm not going to say nuclear family, insular family, all of that, um, because family is different, but there are so many people who are out there on their own. There are so many people for whom family culture 
has fallen apart. Family culture can look very different depending on your uh, ethnicities, your uh, different cultural backgrounds, the influences and socioeconomic status, all of this can impact your family culture. Hearth cult, that's hearth cult. Therein, you, if you lose this, if, if this falls away because the world has, you know, like in the US, the big melting pot, I hate that term. I hate the idea of the melting pot because it melts away everything that's valuable. You know, yes, we're all in here together, but if, if you melt it all together, it becomes one big gooey mess and nobody has their individuality anymore. Nobody can be themselves. They're all faceless cogs in the grand design. Ugh, that's not what heathenry is about. That's not what life is about. You know, I, the way that I view heathenry, we have this life, you know, yeah, aspects of our souls go on to different areas. Um, a large part of it I see is rejoining the ancestors. But when I go to my ancestors, when I go into the mound and I join my ancestors at feast, I want to be able to say, I lived my life my way and I'm okay with it. You know, people may not like me, uh, people may not agree with me, but I lived my way and I'm good with that. I want to see that and I want people to know it's okay. You don't have to step up and do things the way some national org does because a national org says you have to do it. You don't have to step up and say, okay, I believe the Eddas because this is the way that's written in the Eddas and, and no, guys, read the Eddas. Sure, absolutely, read the Eddas. There's some fantastic stuff in there we can't get anywhere else. But look at it deeply. Think about it. Explore it. Look at the sagas and explore them deeply with applied thought and pull what you can from it, but build your own ideas. Now, not to say make everything up new, but continue to build. Take this which you've inherited and add a piece of you to it. You know, I don't like Ridgar. I'm not completely throwing everything out and building something new with Ridgar. I am building on some historical elements. I'm building on some ancestral elements that have developed into what my tribe is today, but we are feeding that with pieces of us. You know, there are things that we do at our tribal gatherings that are dorky as all get out because we're a bunch of nerds. We love to play video games. We love to talk about tabletop games. We love comics and movies and all of this. So yeah, a lot of our conversations center around that. We'll get out and play games that may not be historically accurate, but we enjoy them. And because that's a piece of us that goes into the well and joins what our ancestors did that they enjoyed. And these build into traditions. It's a beautiful thing. When you can pull traditions from what was done and how they did it, add elements of yourself to it, like watermelon and ritual. Do I think that the ancient Norwegians did this? No. Is it appropriate for what we do if we are hailing Suna and we are giving offering to her and the watermelon is the embodiment of the sun in Texas? Because what makes a good watermelon? Direct sun exposure. A beautiful, beautiful, Melons grown from the earth, from Texas soil, Texas vates here, kissed by Sona herself. It's a beautiful thing. Watermelon is like one of my favorite things on the planet, so that's why I go to that. But anyway, I'm running long on this, and that's partially because I'm kind of worked up about the situation. Um, I intend to go through and talk to you guys about some specific elements on how you can make your heathenry your heathenry. And it's not going to be like like when I did the Rune series and every episode for the next four episodes is going to be this. It's not. Now, the next episode may be about this simply because this was actually supposed to be that, uh, but I got on a tangent. And so now this is kind of the intro to, hey, <laughs> tribal identity, let's go. Um, so the, the next one, I'm going to focus on a specific aspect of tribal identity, and then we're going to go into some other things, and then we'll come back to this subject over time. Okay? So... Please, guys, uh, as we go forward through these videos, be thinking about your heathenry, about what you believe, about your stance and your structure. Uh, I'm a big one that says, look, don't let anybody else tell you how to heathen, okay? Uh, learn from us. Look at how we do things. But I don't do things the way that the people I met during my formative years do things. I do things my way. I don't necessarily do things the way my ancestors did. I pull from that and then... I put a piece of me in it. And that's the thing. This is my heathenry. This is my world. This is how I do things. And when I go into the mound, I will be proud of what I have done. Whether it survives me or not, 
my time here will have been meaningful to me and uh, I will have found my place in heathenry. At least that's my goal. So, all right, guys, I'm going to cut it here. So thank you guys for watching this. I really appreciate it. Uh, this was tangenty as all get out. You can understand now, I think, why uh, the previous cut of this video went wonky. Of course, you haven't seen that yet. It's in the bloopers. Uh, my previous cut got, like, completely scrapped because mm, it went sideways. I explained it in the bloopers, so look there. Anyway, thank you, guys. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you watching these videos and sharing them around, hitting like and all that stuff. I, I really do. So thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I look forward to the feedback that we get coming forward because I think we're going to do some really cool things and I cannot wait to see what you guys do with it because all I'm doing is kind of trying to light a fire. You guys are going to do the actual hard work and uh, hopefully Heathenry will be the better for it in the long run. So hail, thank you, and may your hearth fires burn bright. Let's see if we can get the camera centered without knocking it over again. Would everybody watch that blooper of my last review show? But man, that camera took a tumble. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I'm still doing the review shows. Hope you guys like those. I know I only get like maybe 50 views on those versus you know the couple hundred that I tend to get on my my raving read my uh, Raven's Call show. So, if you're not familiar, the raving, raving reviews on the side. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, water, sure, why not? Let's do that. <laughs> uh, it's been a long week. I'm a little punch drunk. I've been out here doing yard work for the last couple of days, so I'm tired. I don't know. It's Texas summer, so it's finally hot. Yeah, I think it's a. Uh, 100 degrees, almost 100 degrees yesterday. Not quite. Didn't quite reach there. Now, the heat index was well up there towards 110, but, you know, eh. UV index was like a 9. It's ridiculous. Oh, I was so tired. <laughs> Sweaty. But it was good. It's good hard work. I loved it. So, anyway, let's uh, let's give this a try, I think. Maybe? Yeah. Okay. And uh, 3, 2, 1, let's jam. Like I said, largely influenced by monotheistic religions, some of the polytheistic religions. Polytheistic, not theistic, theistic. Um, so. We're going to scrap this and start over. We're way off base. We are way. Okay, that last video, that last attempt at the video, go back and pull the blooper stuff from the beginning if you want to, dude. Um, yes, I talk to myself as far as notes go. You guys don't always see that. Sometimes I leave them in. But anyway, um, that last attempt at this video went horribly awry. Um, I'm not even sure where I was going. You know, I ramble normally, but this was bad. You guys don't understand. I got to a point where I went, how do I get back to subject? We're going to scrap it and just start over. So take two, <laughs> or at least whatever take I'm on now, but officially take two. Anyway, so here we go in three, two, one, let's jam. <laughs>